So what we will do is we will start uh, with a quick introduction of uh, PDEs, uh, how uh, we enter PDEs in COMSA, and uh, solve a simple problem. Then go back and start with an algebraic equation, go to ordinary differential equation, go back to partial differential equation, and uh, solve a, a bigger uh, coupled problem. So in console, there are, uh, for the uh, PD interfaces, you have options between coefficient form, general form, and uh, weak form. Uh, so the coefficient form and the general form are uh, ways to basically put in your equations using the strong form of uh, your PDE. Uh, well, once you have that, the software uses the finite element method to solve this equation. So in the background, it's going to convert them uh, into a weak form. But if you have or you already have your own weak form, you can directly put in the weak form uh, as well. Uh, most people use the coefficient and general form, but sometimes the weak form gives you uh, more flexibility. Um, uh, so. And uh, it's the strongest form anyway in terms of uh, giving you flexibility and being faster. So uh, in your uh, numerical PDs class, are you guys doing finite differences or finite elements as well? Both, Both right? OK. So you would have seen the weak form. Is it? OK. Good. So let's start with the coefficient form PDE. It works really with a template. So there is this big template which says, OK, if your independent variable, uh, if your dependent variable, the variable you're trying to solve for, let's say you called it u, then you get this equation where you have to specify the mass term, e, the damping or mass term, d, the diffusion uh, coefficient, c, the flux coefficient, convection coefficient, absorption coefficient, and source terms. And this uh, can be um, fixed numbers, or they can be functions of uh, your special uh, coordinates and time. But they can also be uh, a function of the unknown itself. So if they are a function of the unknown itself, for example, let's say you are solving a heat transfer problem where the conductivity is temperature dependent, <coughs> then the fusion coefficient there is not going to be constant, but it's going to be a function of the independent variable as well itself. Or if you are, are having uh, uh, heat sources where the heat generation rate is temperature dependent or uh, reaction rates being uh, concentration dependent, then the source terms will not be uh, fixed, but they will be functions of the unknown uh, itself, and you're going to have a nonlinear uh, problem. So uh, once you specify, you specify uh, all of these terms, if you don't have them, you put them to zero. So for example, if you are solving um, uh, parabolic equations such as a heat transfer or chemical reactions or groundwater flow, you don't have this mass term, you don't have the second time derivative, so you would specify zero for E, and then uh, you specify the other uh, values. So there are two units you want to specify here. Uh, you have to specify the units for the independent variable. Uh, probably you guys been now doing a lot of mathematics like to do all of this uh, in a non-dimensionalized uh, manner, but um, a lot of uh, uh, engineers they want the units, and they have data in certain physical units, and they just want to use that uh, directly. So if you're using uh, the dimensions, then you have to specify the unit for the independent variable and for the source term. Now, we have a lot of terms here to be entered in this equation, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have eight terms, but we are saying specify the unit for the source term f and for the independent variable. Uh, why not uh, specify the others then? How is that enough? How is it enough to specify two uh, units for just two quantities when you have multiple terms in your equation? How would it fill in the rest? It would. Uh, how do you think it will? You're specifying the units for the independent variable. Here is u, and then the source term in this equation f. 
Hmm? Yeah, right from dimensional consistency. Basically, for example, if you if you think about the absorption term, the units of A multiplied by the units of U should be the same dimension as FF. So all of these others uh, will be filled in from dimensional consistency. And that uh, is basically makes it uh, consistent. Instead. instead, if we allow people to change, to specify all of them, you can end up specifying an inconsistent uh, set of units. And the source for also uses that to track, for example, if it was expecting something in one unit, you specify your data in another unit, then it will complain that there is a unit, it's expecting one unit and you are specifying another unit. So it works by basically looking at, you write your equations first, and you compare it with the template, and you fill it in. It's that easy. So uh, for example, uh, if you think of this template, a lot of these problems from acoustics, chemistry, uh, finance, or uh, population dynamics, you can fit them into uh, this template. If you start with the acoustics equation, uh, we don't have B, but the EA would be uh, 1 over rho C squared, where rho is the density, and uh, C is the speed of sound. Uh, or if you're doing chemistry, you don't have EA. Uh, DA would be 1. Uh, your, the independent you are solving for, U would be concentration. C would be a diffusion coefficient. Uh, if you have advection, uh, beta would be your advection velocity. And then F would be your reaction rate. Or if you are doing a uh, population model, like, let's say the Fisher ecologic model, then U would be your population size. Uh, you don't have EA. Uh, DA is 1. Uh, C is uh, basically the migration rate. Uh, and then uh, A can be um, basically it's formed out of the the burst rate or the net burst rate and then the um, carrying capacity uh, so you have R U over K carrying the carrying capacity minus one uh, so you basically look at your equation and see how does it fit into any of uh, that template so the same way uh, then once you specify the equations you have to specify the boundary conditions and the boundary conditions also come in templates and the way the boundary condition templates work is you will see something on the left hand, it gives you something like left hand side is equal to right hand side. And you're going to enter the right hand side. So for example, the Drishley boundary conditions, the template is u is equal to r, or uh, whatever your independent variable was is equal to r. So if you want to put a zero uh, for the boundary condition uh, everywhere, then you basically pick Drishley and then for R, you basically say R is equal to zero. So that's the template. Or if you are uh, having a more uh, complicated one, we have something called the constraint. The constraint basically says zero is equal to R. So then what you have to do is put the expression that needs to be zero at the boundary. And that is R. And um, then uh, where there are others uh, as well, but you uh, pick the boundary condition. Some of them, you don't have to specify anything. For example, if you are doing zero flux, or if you are doing uh, periodic uh, boundary conditions, it, there is nothing more to, to, to infer. You just have to specify where you have uh, zero flux, or uh, between which boundaries you have uh, periodicity. Uh, but it's really uh, picking uh, from the template. I will demonstrate this uh, with an example. Uh, so, for example, for the boundary conditions, let's say we want to have uh, zero normal components. You are solving for u, uh, let u be a vector, and then the normal component of that vector is going to be zero uh, in some direction. Uh, so this happens, for example, in structural mechanics. If you have rollers somewhere, then the normal displacement in that direction is going to be zero. It can slip tangentially, but it's not going to move in the norm, in the direction normal to your boundary. Or if whenever you have symmetry, uh, then you're going to have that. Like symmetry in fluid flow, for example, would mean that the normal component of the velocity in some direction is going to be zero. Now, you can use the constraint condition. For example, it says zero is equal to r. So what you have to do is, what should be r so that you have zero normal component? 
this is what you have. If you if R is basically the dot product of your sol uh, solution with the outward normal, you just type the right hand side for R, and that will basically mean a zero constraint, uh, zero normal component. Or if you had a convective flux, the template you get is here. Uh, what you have to specify is the two terms, G and Q. Uh, and then, for example, if you have a Newton type uh, cooling, then uh, G is going to be uh, your convection coefficient multiplied by the ambient temperature, whereas Q is simply your uh, convection uh, coefficient. So this is how it works. 